let's get into that a little deeper. Can you kind of break down the difference for people who aren't familiar with apprenticeships programs and how those work? Well, the biggest and most important difference is everyone gets paid. We hire them. They get paid at this point, a minimum of 18 to $20 an hour. Once they get hired, the first thing they do is go through our bootcamp curriculum. So they're getting paid to go through something that normally costs $15,000 and we don't charge anything for it. Then there's no weird contracts where we're like, you have to work with for us for two years and then you got to work at this employer. There's none of that. It's just, we trust and invest in somebody, give them three to four months of training first, and then place them embedded inside a engineering team. And it really gives them, you know, another you know, eight months or so of hands-on uh, experience every day. And so the difference between a boot camp and an apprenticeship is that you get a job from day one with an apprenticeship. It's really like your job to lose. We do all of the career services and sort of like match them up with employers. And then most of the employers will make a hiring decision to bring that person on. What is the typical salary that you've seen people make after they've left your apprenticeship program? Last year was averaging around 67. And this year is averaging closer to around 77 in that range. Hey, what's up, guys? I just want to interrupt your video real quick. I promise it's going to be short. Uh, asking you guys to do me a favor and hit the subscribe button below. Also, be sure to like and comment on our videos. Let us know what you think about them. And feel free to share it with a friend. I hope you guys enjoy this clip, and I'll let you get back to it. How many students do you typically have? Like, do you have cohorts? If so, how many students do you typically have, like, in a single cohort? We've okay. always done rolling cohorts. So we will start batches as soon as there's demand in the marketplace. We'll start a batch of students. And it could be as small as two students. It could be as large as right now we're putting together 10 person cohort. I'd love to get to the point where we're doing 10 a month, but we're not quite there yet. And then in addition to that, we have very low attrition rates. So we just lost somebody yesterday and it was just like heartbreaking. It's still like, man, I could have helped this person get this amazing career. And like, man, it's tough, but it's much fewer and further in between. The number of people that drop out of a, of a coding bootcamp and don't get a job is somewhere around like 20, 25 to 28% for most programs. Hey. So that's a big, wow. that's a big difference. That's a big Delta. Okay. And then how long, I know you said they're rolling cohorts, but how long is like the front end part of it? Like where they're just purely training and learning and working on problems before they get placed at an actual employer? Three to four months. It's typical. Okay. I understand one of the other really difficult challenges for people is keeping up inside of the program. Not everybody learns everything at exactly the same pace. And so we've built flexibility into like every program that I've been part of. So it's like, even though it's an eight week program, we never kick anybody out at week eight. If they need until week 12 to get the material and get it under their belt and graduate, it's like, cool. Right. You know, it does, they're already in, it doesn't harm us and we're doing rolling cohorts. So it doesn't harm us to have more people in the classroom. That would be really problematic yeah. if we were doing traditional, like back to back where everybody goes to the cohort and then you try to get everybody placed all at the same time and free up all of those seats for like another class that's going to come through. But because we've broken it down that way, we've always been able to like solve for that problem, which is an individual that falls just a little bit behind and needs a little bit more time to get to the finish line. Cool. So man, um. I'm really excited about this model because to me, this makes the most sense, like hands down. You guys are really eliminating like the barriers to entry for every other solution that's out there. So you're in San Diego. Um, I'm in Houston. I would love to see something like this happen in Houston. Like what are your plans to expand outside of the San Diego market? Great question. Um, we are definitely expanding. We have hired people in other states before, and it's really comes down to the individual, um, our customer is really the business. So businesses have to say, Hey, we're looking for people that can work anywhere. And then it's like, all right, game on. And the good news is we can train remote. So we can train people that are in Houston. So what it takes to get this opportunity in a city like Houston, is just the appetite from local businesses. Now we do have some of our, some of our corporate clients are kind of big. And so they have presences everywhere. So the example would be, uh, we have a client service now. And ServiceNow has offices like all throughout the country. And they've said, hey, look, we want to pilot something with you. And so when I say, okay, well, geographically, do you have any constraints on where people need to be? They're like, anywhere there's a ServiceNow office. I was like, yeah, that's what I want to hear, right? So, you know, we do um, have a project with Becca Dickinson, Intuit, 
Um, we partner with Microsoft on some things. So like we have some really large organizations that have footprints that are sort of like spread out, which can provide for a faster response to be able to build something in like a cluster in a particular place. What's a day in the life like for a student that's in the apprenticeship program? Are they, and also, are they doing like a 40 hour a week commitment? Yeah. So I'll talk about that last one. It is a 40 hour a week job. So a full-time position. Um, but it also has, you know, medical and dental and we've got, um, PTO and paid holidays. We had holiday yesterday. So, um, I would say the day would typically, if they're in the training phase, so if they're not the beginning, that learning phase, the very beginning, the day is pretty much like it is for most immersive coding boot camps, right? Come in, you've got some lecture material that you've got to go through. You've got some coding problems that you got to work through. You got a project that you're going to be building and working on. And so there's a lot of that rinse and repeat. Once they get out of that training phase though, and they get into the, on the job portion, then it's going to be really like you're embedded on a software engineering team. So a lot of the same daily activities, we have an all hands meeting every morning. So the entire team gets together and meets, um, as an organization, and then they might have to go off and they might have to do a stand up with a team that they're working on. And so stand up process is just talking about what you worked on yesterday, anything you're working on today, and then blockers that you have. They will usually be involved in some uh, planning sessions. And so they might have to attend some, you know, design and architecture meetings, and then they'll kind of work through their queue of work. Typically folks will have either a sprint or they'll have a, a board of tasks that you can just kind of pull things off that board and work on them. And occasionally the monotony of the day is, is broken up by, uh, lunch, right. And, uh, maybe some additional meetings that you've got to go through but a lot of reviewing other people's code, writing some of your own code. And then there may be an end of day, you know, stand up, but it's, it's really client specific at that point. We want the experience to feel like, and it is like you're working inside of a normal software engineering team. So all of the daily activities that would take place are going to be, you know, um, part of the course, normal day to day. Hey, we're, I don't think you, we talked about it, but what are like the backgrounds of the, uh, the candidates that are in your cohort? Are they just fresh out of high school or like returning back to work or what, what's kind of the skill level that they have in the background? Across the spectrum. So we are looking to really get more involved with people that are just graduating from high school, right? I think that that's an awesome opportunity to just, from my perspective, told you how long it took. If I could start at that point, start fresh, then... And they won't have to go through some of the pain that a lot of people go through where, you know, they not sure what they want to do. So they take a year off and then they go to community college and like their journey is just like really long. That said, we have a lot of people that are transitioning. So they've had a few years of work and they realize that whatever they got their initial degree in or their education is really not where they see themselves in the future. So they want to transition. I had a woman who graduated from MIT and then spent a while raising her family. And then once her last teenager was like off to college, she was like, okay, I'm ready to return. And so she actually went through our program. We got her into like an amazing company here locally, Walmart labs, right? So, um, Walmart labs, you know, they're doing stuff at, at web scale. They're selling like, just like Amazon, like huge, uh, volumes of e-commerce. And like that to me was like perfect scenario, right? Someone came in, refreshed their skills, got what they did to be successful. And we helped them make that connection.